Hello Crafty Family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY projects, we will be creating some wall hanging decor with lots of options to create and interchange different displays. Now as always, all of the projects I create have a complete supply list in the description box below so you can easily use it for reference as you gather your supplies. Now this video is in collaboration with DIY Beauty on purpose and I will be sharing her awesome channel with you all later in this video. Now before we start, I have to say hey hey to all my subscribers and if you are a new visitor to my channel today, I hope you'll consider subscribing as well and stick around to enjoy all of these fun and easy crafts that I will share today. So now what we're going to do is jump right into those projects. Now we're going to start with this wood plank with a metal hook display. Now to do this, we're going to need a couple of pieces of scrap wood and I have some one by six pieces here. Now what we're going to do with these pieces is I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to determine how long I want my piece. Now these wall planks can range anywhere from 13 to about 18 inches. So I'm just going to make um, some lines here to see how long I want it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this one marking to my second board. Now I am just eyeballing this in the beginning just to see how the look will be. Now I'm going to take these out to my saw and I am going to cut the ends off. Now what I ended up going with is two pieces at 15 inches. So now that my pieces are cut, I'm going to take my Jacobian stain by Binwax and I'm going to apply one coat of this stain all over my boards. Now I do want to make sure that you get around the sides and edges really well and you want to make sure you cover all of those raw ends. Now I usually don't stay in the back of my projects, but I am going to do it for this project because I want to be able to choose the best side for my final project. Now I'm going to repeat this for my second board and once that's done, I'm going to sit this outside to completely dry for about two hours. So now that the boards are all dry, we're going to proceed with adding our hardware. Now I got these hooks from Amazon and they also come with some screws and they come in about a pack of about 10. Now if you don't have these hooks, you can also use some hooks from the Dollar Tree and here they are in silver and you can also use paint stir sticks for the backing. Now if you don't have one by sixes, you can also use one by twos and adhere them together and this will form a usable plank too. So now we're going to take our stained planks and what I'm going to do is apply the hardware. Now I'm kind of just eyeballing this and I'm going to use a mason jar as a guide. Now once I have the placement that I would like, I'm just going to mark those screw holes with a pencil. And then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to make a mark where that top screw hole is and it's about three and a half inches. So I'm going to mark my first screw hole on my second piece at three and a half inches as well. So the hook will be the same on both pieces. So now what I'm going to do is protect my work surface and then I'm going to drill a hole all the way through for my two screws. Now you want to make sure you drill right on those marks that you made. So now that my holes are in both of my pieces, we can start to apply the hardware. Now I'm going to use the screws that were supplied with the hooks and I'm simply going to screw these in with a screwdriver. Now since these are fairly short, I really don't need to use my drill to drill these in and they're fairly easy to just drew them uh, to screw them in with your screwdriver. Now here is one completely in place. We're going to do that for the second one and now we have both of our hooks in our boards. Now to hang these, just go ahead and flip them both over and I am going to choose some hardware to hang up. Now I like to use these D-ring hooks. They seem to be the most effective in making sure everything stays in place. So you can get these from the hardware store or even Amazon. So I'm going to determine the center of the back of the board and I'm just going to put the slightest little bit of hot glue on there just to hold it in place while I screw it in place. Now I am going to drill a small pilot hole in that screw hole and I'm not going to go through the whole board because you don't want your screw poking out the other end. Then I'm going to take the small screw that comes with the D hook and also screw that in with my screwdriver. Now here is one all installed and we're going to repeat this for our second board. So now our hooks are installed in both of our boards and we can hang them up. So now these are what the boards will look like when they're all finished and hanging and I love the way that Jacobian stain brings out the grain. 
Now these are now ready to hang all kinds of decor in your space and I am going to be showing you several fun options to use for this today. Now before I start, I wanted to take a moment to mention that this video is in collaboration with Leonette from DIY Beauty on Purpose. Now she creates the most beautiful furniture flips, Dollar Tree DIYs, and even projects with wood that are super easy to make. Now her projects are very budget friendly as well right up our alley. Now be sure to stop by her page, check out her amazing creations, and be sure to let her know that She's So Crafty sent you. Now I'll link her page down in the description box below. So now let's jump right into the next project and that will be mason jar decor with beaded trim. Now we're going to need two of these mason style jars and I picked these up from Walmart. We'll also need one pack of beads and I got these from Dollar Tree. So we're going to take one of our jars and we are going to be placing beads on the outside of these jars in a diagonal X uh, type of pattern. So go ahead and take the beads and what we're going to do is in order to have a continuous strand, just go ahead and cut the beads and we'll have one total long piece. Now in order to get our diagonal perfectly straight, I'm going to use some painter's tape to do this to help with my guide. And I just took some, uh, cut it in half, and then I ran it across the jar in a diagonal. Now I'm going to run some hot glue along the edge of that, uh, pa that painter's tape and place my beads right along the edge so it's nice and straight. Now I'm just going to trim it down to fit, remove that painter's tape, and then I'm going to make an X pattern right over those beads. So I'm going to take that same painter's tape and go over it in an X. Then again, just go ahead and run some hot glue along the edge of that painter's tape on the actual jar, and then place another row of those beads in place. Now once those are in place, remove that painter's tape and trim those beads down. Now go ahead and repeat this all the way around the jar, making X's on all four sides of your jar. Now once that's done, go ahead and trim off any excess beads around the ends. So now all four sides of our jar are completed. Now we're just gonna repeat this for our second jar. And here are both of our jars with our beaded trim and I'm going to go around with it with some rubbing alcohol and clean off all of the glass and remove all of those hot glue webs. And then I'm going to go over it with a couple of coats of this flat white spray paint by Krylon. So after those coats dry, here is what our jars will look like. Now in order to hang these, um, I'm going to be using some string. Now I did also paint the lids of those mason jars as well. Now this twine is from the Dollar Tree and it is fairly strong. So what I'm gonna do is loop it at the top to form a hanging string and then cut it to size. Now to hold these in place, I'm just gonna hot glue each end on the threaded portion of the jar just to hold it until I can get that ring wrapped around the top. So I'm just gonna place that over the neck of the jar, over the string, and once I screw that into place, it locks that string in place. Now that hot glue is only to temporarily hold it until you get that ring around the neck of the jar. Now we're gonna repeat this for your other jar and then test to see how it hangs on your board and it looks perfect. So now I've added some lavender bunches and here are the jars displayed on our hangers. Now I just love how these turned out with the beads and they really do look amazing. And the lavender adds that perfect pop of spring color that pulls it all together. Now you all have to let me know in the comments what you think about these beaded jars. Now this project is a frosted mason jar decor with lights. Now again, we're gonna use two of these mason style jars that I picked up from Walmart. We need two packs of these fairy lights and I got these from Dollar Tree. And we'll need a one two pack of these wood finials that I picked up from Lowe's. So we're gonna remove the lids from both of our mason jars. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna put three or four coats of this frosted glass spray paint by Rust-Oleum on the jars. Then we're gonna take our lids and inserts and spray paint them with flat black spray paint by Krylon. Now while those dry, we're going to work on our wood finials, remove those from the package, and you notice they do have screws on the bottom. Now if you want to remove them, you can remove them with some pliers, but I'm going to keep mine in place for this project. 
So I'm going to be painting them with some black acrylic paint. Now I'm just going to apply one nice coat over the entire wood finial, um, all of the exposed areas. So when I sit them out to dry, this is what they look like when they are all dry. And here are my mason jars after those coats have dried and you can see the difference between that and the clear jar. It turned out perfect. And our inserts and lids and our finials are all dry as well. So what we're gonna do is take the finial and use that pointed screw in and we're gonna mark the center of our lids for our mason jars. Now this is just gonna identify the very center so we can drill a hole in the middle. I'm just gonna take my drill and I am gonna drill where I marked it and then take one of the finials and just screw it into the lid. And then we're going to repeat that for the other lid as well until we have two pieces that look like this. And now just put the ring of the mason jars right over the top. Now we're going to work on our jars and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of those fairy lights that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to I'll go ahead and put some batteries in the pack. Now I'm placing it in the jar at first just to see if it shows through and it actually doesn't. It's that frosted color really worked well. So then I'm going to turn them on and place them inside the jar and wow, look at that glow. Now to hang these, I am going to use some of this wire that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm just going to cut two pieces of the wire and I am going to form a hanger on the threads of the jar just like I did before. Now I'm going to hot glue it in place, adjust to hold it right on the place that I placed it. And this is what it will look like. And now we can just insert our piece um, right over the top. So we're going to insert our lid and our ring right over the wire, twist it into place, and it locks that wire right on there so these are hanging. And now just repeat this for your other jar. And now you can test out the hanging out with your wall piece. And here is what they will look like. So now here they are on display and I'm really loving this look with these mason jar lights. Now I also think that these finials give these a sophisticated look like something you would see in a high-end store. Now another great idea would be to use a remote control light set and the fairy lights on Amazon are really inexpensive with a remote. Now how would you choose to display these in your home? Let me know in the comments below. Now I really hope that you're enjoying these crafts so far and I wanted to pop in and let you know that you can follow me on all of these platforms shown here as She's So Crafty. Now I have also provided the links to these in the description box below. So now let's get back to those DIY projects. Now this project is a set of distressed hanging crates. Now we're going to be using two crates from the Dollar Tree. And we'll also be using some jute twine or plant chain from the Dollar Tree. So the first thing we're going to do with those crates is place a coat of this white chalk paint um, on those crates. Now I like to start on the inside, get one nice coat in there um, on all of the sides, and then I'm going to paint the outside. Now you don't have to put more than one coat. We are going for a distressed look on these and one coat will do the trick. Just go ahead and do this for both of them and let them sit to completely dry. So now that they're dry, what we're going to do is take our drill and we are going to drill two holes on the side of the crate. Now these holes will be used to hold our string or your chain in place. So just go ahead and drill a hole near the top on both ends. Now once this is done for all of your crates, this is what they will look like. Now in order to add some distressing, I am using this pavement gray acrylic paint and I'm taking a fine paintbrush and just going around the edges. You can go as light or as heavy as you like. I just kind of want to give a nice worn weathered look to mine and I like to go light on my distressing. So now we can add our jute twine to hang our crates and I'm just gonna grab, um, grab two pieces, some long pieces of jute twine and I wanna thread them from the outside going into the inside of the crate on both sides. Now once it's on the inside, go ahead and tie um, a loose knot on the inside because we may need to make adjustments in the length depending on how they fit on your wall hanger. And this is what one of the crates will look like with both strings in place. 
And now you're just going to repeat this for your second crate until you have both of them with those strings. Now once your strings are ready to go, all you have to do is fill it with the greenery of your choice. And here you have it. I've added a few bundles of boxwood to my crates and I really love this look. Now I think that adding the crates gives a new element to these wall hangers and it's so easy to change out the greenery as you like. Now no matter what you choose to place in these crates, the rustic farmhouse vibes will definitely shine through on this piece. Let me know what you would like to place in your crates on this display. Now this project is a set of decorative trimmed mason jars. Now we're going to need two of the mason style jars that I got from Walmart. And we'll also be using this sun hat from the Dollar Tree. Now we are going to start with destructing this sun hat. So go ahead and remove any tags and ribbons from the sun hat, including tags on the inside. Now in order to take this apart, we want to find the very end, which is pretty easy, and we're only going to snip just a few of those threads, and then you notice it just easily comes apart. Now we're going to be using this trim to decorate our mason jar for this project. Now I've done a few in advance, and I wrapped it around this spool. So go ahead and take your mason jars and remove those lids. Now we're going to start with one and what we're going to do is we are going to be applying this trim around our jar. Now we are going to start at the very, very bottom. Just start with a dot of hot glue near the bottom that's even with the bottom edge. And then once that place is um, started, go ahead and add hot glue along that bottom edge of the jar and wrap your ribbon around. Now you want to be very um, careful with this. You want to make sure it's nice and even because this will determine the placement of the remainder of your rows. Now once you're once you're um, meeting up at the under end, you want to cut your ribbon at least a quarter of an inch longer to overlap the previous section and then place it into place. Now this will start your seam on the back. Now for the next row, we are going to do the same thing. We're going to apply a dot of hot glue to hold that trim right in place. Now for this round, what we're going to do is we are going to overlap the previous round by about an eighth of an inch. And we're going to do this for every round after this. Now you just want to continue wrapping this around your jar. Now we're going to keep wrapping around until we have about eight rounds. Now I decided to stop at eight rounds for my jar, but you can go all the way up if you like. Now we're going to repeat this for the second jar as well until we have two wrapped jars. Now I love this little peekaboo section at the top. Now for the rings of the jar, we are just going to be paint, uh, spray painting them with some flat black spray paint by Krylon. Now once that does dry, we are going to be adding another piece of that hat trim for the hanger for these jars. Now again, I am just going to apply a dab of hot glue along the threads of the jar and place the ends of the straps right on those threads. Now once that's secure into place, just slip your ring right over there. You want to screw it on and once you screw that on, it locks that strap into place. Now we're going to repeat this for our other jar and now we can test these out on our wall hangers. And there they are, perfect fit. So now I've decorated my jars with some of these pearl drop succulents. Now I think that they look amazing. Now this particular look is giving me all those boho vibes and I love how the sun hat trim looks in these pieces. Now you can certainly add any succulent or plant that you like, just make it your own to match your own home decor and your personal space. Now this project is a set of hanging metal vases. We're going to need two of these metal planters from the Dollar Tree and we'll need some jute twine or you can use a plant hanger from the Dollar Tree. 
So we're gonna start with our two metal planters and go ahead and grab something to protect your work surface because we will be drilling holes in our containers. Now, if you don't wanna drill the holes, you can definitely take a hammer and nail to make your holes in the side as well. So just go ahead and drill a hole on opposite sides of the container and we will be using these as hanger holes. Now we're gonna repeat this for your other container until both of them have their holes all in place. Now we're gonna take our jute twine and we are gonna thread it from the outside to the inside of each one of the planter buckets. And then we're gonna cut a length of, this, of the jute twine, thread it through the other side, all the way into the center of the container. Go ahead and grab those ends in the middle and just loosely tie a knot in the middle, just in case we need to make some adjustments later in the length. Now, once both of them are done, here is what they will look like. Now I'm just gonna take my wall hanger and see how that planter fits on there. And then from here, you can make any adjustments that you need. So now what I wanna do is just add a little decoration to one of my little um, galvanized planters. So I have some of this buffalo check ribbon on hand. So I'm just gonna cut a length that will wrap it around and I am gonna tie it around a bow on my planter. Now I'm just gonna go right over where that jute twine is. Now you wanna make sure it's nice and even all the way around. Go ahead and tie a pretty little bow on the front. And here is what it will look like. I think it is so adorable. And you wanna repeat this for your other planter until both of them are completed. Now all you have to do is add your greenery and hang these up. And I just love how the metal and wood looks together in this piece. Now, even though this was a simple update, it really would look great in your warm and cozy home decor. Now, I really had so much fun creating all these different options for you to try for your wall hanger, but let me know in the comments which one of these was your absolute favorite today. Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Crafty EE on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Now, don't forget to show some love to DIY Beauty on Purpose on her channel and let her know that I sent you by. To make sure you don't miss my next video, be sure to click subscribe and tap that bell to be notified when the next DIY goes live. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time.